Gotcha. Hey, everybody. How you doing today? So, in today's vlog, a little nerd news. Five programming languages that are probably doomed. Link below. So, uh, there's a lot of articles out there. And I have to tell you, a lot of them I won't talk about because, um, you know. This one, though, it's backed by statistics. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So let me just read a couple of points here and I'll get into my commentary. This video is sponsored by Buddy, a tool that allows for easy continuous deployments and continuous integrations. It's in a GUI, very intuitive. They have over 100 predefined actions and integrations to use. Not all programming languages endure forever. In fact, even the most popular ones inevitably crumble away as new generations of developers embrace other languages and frameworks they find easier to work with. That's a truism in life in general. You can always count on laziness and greed. Laziness and greed. So in the case of programmers, it's not laziness, it's efficiencies. In order to determine which programming languages are likely doomed in the medium to long term, we looked at the popularity rankings by TI, OBE, and Redmonk. If your career is based on any of the following languages, we, su we suggest you diversify your skill set at some point. People are going to like this one. Number one on the list, Ruby. Ah, yes. Once upon a time, Ruby enjoyed a fair bit of popularity. It was a top 10 language in the TIOBE's monthly list, and developer praised how easy it was to learn. But over the past 18 months, it has dipped on TIOBE's, TOBs, I guess we'll call it, rankings from 9th to 12th place after falling at one point to 16th place. Even more disturbing, PHP is in the top five. No, I just added that. I just added that. No, even more disturbing, an analysis of Dice Job posting data, data over the past year shows a startling dip in the number of companies looking for technology professionals who are skilled in Ruby. In 2018, the number of Ruby jobs declined 56%. Wow, 56%. When you have a 20% decline, that's really bad. When you have a 56% decline, I'm just kidding. That's huge warning sign that companies are turning away from Ruby. And if that's the case, the language's user base could rapidly erode to almost nothing. That's a huge drop, 56%. Of course, that's one data point. You would have to look at others. But as you know, if you've been watching this channel for years, I predicted this. I warned people many years ago when Ruby was top using my nerd skills. I was able to determine that uh, Ruby was not going to be uh, the predominant language vis-a-vis uh, -vis PHP and Java, JavaScript. How did I figure this out? Well, I pulled out my nerd programmer's crystal ball and I looked into the future. No, what I did was combine my nerd skills from the 90s forward and my business skills, brought them together it's kind of like the Infinity Stones and the Gauntlet. Together, they're pretty powerful. So when you combine business knowledge and skills with programming knowledge, you can look at market forces, you can consider business considerations, not only technical considerations. And I was able to see that Ruby was, was doomed in the long term. So I, I was advising people, you can find blogs from 2006 where I was telling people 2007, PHP was the way to go. And of course, PHP, depending on the list, it's in the top five or six languages out there overall, overall. It is surely the number one server-side programming language in the world today. Server-side, not overall, but server-side. You know, JavaScript is like one number one or two, depending on the list, but most JavaScript is front-end coding. They do back-end with Node, but most is front-end. Java, uh, a lot of it is Android development. A lot of it's Android development. Uh, let's, what are the other top? Python, most of it is uh, data science work, AI work. There's some web work done with Python, no question, with Django, et cetera, but 
PHP is only web. That's all it does. It's a specialty language. It does. It just does the web. Yes, PHP has been used to do AI and stuff, but I would never use PHP for that. I just use it for web stack. Anyhow, next language, Haskell. Supposedly, Haskell is headed for a major update in 2020. Check out the check out a repo for it. A number of prominent firms and projects, Facebook, GitHub, etc., have all used Haskell to implement vital programs at one point or another. However, Haskell continues to flatline on RedMonk's long-term language ranking, suggesting that there's virtually no developer buzz around it. Apple's Objective C is 35 years old, and it's clear that the company wants it dead. Yeah, yeah forget about Objective C. They, Apple, they came up with Swift to push Objective-C out because Objective-C is kind of a primitive language relative to others. You, you're much more productive writing your code in Swift anyway. And Swift is super fast. Swift is actually a great language. I still would be looking to use uh, web stack technologies uh, to a PWA or uh, what was that other Google framework? I forget. I'll put it right here once I remember. Anyway, I would use uh, cross-platform solutions for mobile development now except for rare situations where you may need some feature, some speed, if you're going to write natives, Swift for iOS, Java Kotlin for Android. And by the way, on Android development, the future is Kotlin, not Java. Not my opinion. Google has said it, basically. Our sponsor, Buddy, is a CI CD automation tool. It's very intuitive, simple to use. You can set up everything with a GUI. They have over 100 predefined actions integrations to use i welcome tools like buddy because though devops is essential today it can get a little bit too complex and silly to set up and run slowing down the development process tools like buddy can help solve that problem uh, R. Back in the day, R was an increasingly popular language for data analytics. However, it seems that Python is rapidly swallowing up R's market share. Although R is still used by academics and data scientists, companies interested in data analytics are turning to Python for its scalability and ease of use. As a result, R has dipped in the index of programming languages popularity, and other studies have shown a slow decline in R usage in favor of Python. I'm not going to read every bit of this article. I'm going to link to it below. Uh, here's one that uh, I'm not surprised. Perl. Even Redmonk has Perl's popularity declining. It's still going to take a long time for the language to flatten out completely given the sheer number of legacy websites that still feature its code. Nonetheless, widespread developer embrace of other languages for things like building websites means that Perl is going to just fall into increasing disuse. And in an earlier version of this article, we said that Perl had little to no active development. As some, as some helpful commentators pointed out, that's actually not the case. It is updated annually. However, given its decline on Red Monks and Tyobi, we still argue that this is a declining language. Yeah, Perl's been declining for 20 years. When I first started uh, the web game, when I started writing web code in 1994, uh, Perl, Perl CGI was the technology stack, if you will, for server-side programming to, vote, to develop web apps. And um, yeah, it, it, yeah. But then, um, again, like, like all older languages would eventually get replaced, a new language came in, new frameworks, that are far more uh, efficient, far quicker to, to develop in, and uh, away you go, Bob's your uncle, Perl started declining. I've told this story before, but my very first job, my very first gig, rather, as a contractor developing a server-side web application was replacing an old Perl-based application. I looked at the Perl code base, it was a bloody mess, I said, yeah. And I rewrote the whole thing in a fraction of the time using, at the time, a brand new, far superior technology in many respects, something called active server pages. Anyway, that's another story. So there you go. Um, the languages mentioned in this article are not at all surprising to me. Uh, so why has Ruby fallen away? For me, it was because it was slow 
painfully slow, meaning you need a lot of horsepower to get a certain level of performance out of Ruby. And that was one problem. Uh, the other problem was that um, I found Ruby though to be a very elo eloquent or elegant rather language. A lot of things were implied with Ruby. So if you didn't know what you were doing, things weren't obvious to you with the code base. And I always have problems with that. Python is better because it's more explicit. PHP is better. Java is better because it's more explicit. Yes, long-winded, meaning you have to write more code than the elo elegant Ruby stuff, but it's much more obvious what's going on in the code base when you look at Python code. It's much more obvious what's going on in the code base when you look at PHP code. The reason I never adopted Ruby, even though the language was very impressive in of itself, and Rails, which put Ruby on the map, really, was very impressive. And in fact, Rails has its legacy. It's had a profound impact in terms of web development, and you can't take that away from Ruby on Rails. That all said and done, there were some holes. The, the, the speed issue was a, a major issue for me. And at the time when I was looking at it, there was a lot of holes in the language. Certain things that I took for granted in the Java space or even the PHP space wasn't yet mature in the Ruby space and I wasn't w willing to invest there. And at the end of the day, for me, the bottom line was speed. Speed was everything. All right, I hope you found this vlog interesting. Bye-bye, bye-bye. So if you are looking to become a web developer at some point, you're going to have to get yourself a website. Even if you don't decide to go freelancing, you need to have a website. You can think of the website as your home on the web, as a place that people can go check you out. It's, a, uh, it's your online resume, if you will. It's very important that everybody get a website. If you're just learning web design and development, you need to get a website because you need to learn how to work with web hosting companies. You need to know how to get a domain name, how to put up a site online, how to work with web hosting control panels. This is all basic stuff. And you got to know this stuff if you're going to become a web professional, whether you become a web designer, a web professional, as I classify it, somebody who sets up sites or WordPress, and et cetera, for people, or a web developer. This is the basics. So you got to get hosting at some point. Better sooner than later, so you get comfortable with the environment. So I mention all this because I partner with a hosting company who, if you buy one year of hosting from them, this is, you know, this is basic hosting, not too expensive. You buy one year hosting from them, they will pay for your web education with Studio Web. They will pay for either the interactive web developer course, which has everything you need to learn how to become a web designer or web developer, or if you already done that and you want to get into freelancing and entrepreneur, you can get my freelance and entrepreneur course. So you click through the link below, will take you to my website, one of my websites, and then from there you click through, so they track who you are, you buy the hosting, you send an email back to me, and I take care of it personally actually, and I will give you either the interactive web developer course, or I'll give you the freelance and the entrepreneur course. So you're gonna need to get a website, whether you start a business or you become a web professional, you're gonna need a website, you're gonna need to learn how to use web hosting and get a website. So here's your opportunity to get the training for free. That's amazing, great opportunity. Or you can go spend $10,000 in a boot camp or $5,000 in a boot camp. Or you can get the studio web training, which is used, by the way, by lots of colleges and lots of schools for many years now. And top, top people have been produced from studio web. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.